Hi, my name is Susie Bash. I'm a neuroradiologist at RadNet, and in this talk we're going to focus on dementia imaging. These are my disclosures. In this talk, we'll look at the causes of dementia, imaging of dementia, potential emerging treatment, and aria. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia, but other dementias that we'll look at are, will be vascular dementia, dementia with Lewy bodies, FTD, logopenic progressive aphasia, TBI, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, CAA-related inflammation, and normal pressure hydrocephalus. The diagnosis of neurodementia typically starts with cognitive testing. The neurologist then often orders an MRI, and at this point, we'd like to encourage them to add on quantitative volumetric imaging. And sometimes a PET is also ordered, uh, either FDG, amyloid, or tau, with FDG being ordered uh, much more frequently since it's currently reimbursed. This is an example of a positive FDG PET. The PET MR fusion here is on the left. The PET CT fusion is in the middle and on the right. Uh, down in the lower right-hand corner uh, we have a positive amyloid PET. You see diffuse binding of the tracer to the cortex uh, throughout. And now on the left side here is a negative amyloid PET just for reference and you see the cortex looks light, no binding there. Quantitative volumetric imaging is a post-processing tool that identifies and labels anatomic structures, then quantifies the volume of those brain structures and compares that to a large age and gender match normative database. And this allows for volumetric tracking to assess for rate of change over time. This is an example of what segmentation looks like using a machine learning tool. This is another example of segmentation from a different company and this is using a deep learning tool. This is an example of what a quantitative volumetric dementia report looks like. We're given the volumes of different uh, pertinent substructures in the brain, as well as their normative percentile, so we can see what is statistically significant for patient age. That's displayed on a pictorial graph. The second page of the report gives us additional um, uh, structures throughout the brain that can help us differentiate between different types of neurodementia. This is a dementia report from a different company, again giving us the volume of pertinent structures including the different uh, lobar cortices as well as the hippocampi and their normative percentiles in both uh, pictorial graph and bullseye representation. PET can play an important role in dementia imaging, and there are three different types of PET that can be used. So amyloid PET is on the uh, first column here, tau PET is in the middle, and FDG PET is on the right. The top row, we see a normal patient, and on the bottom row, you see diffuse binding of that amyloid tracer to the amyloid plaque. Um, uh, for amyloid PET and tau PET, we see um, increased uptake in the bilateral temporal lobes, and on the FDG PET, we see cortical hypometabolism in the bilateral parietal lobes and posterior cingulate gyri, and you would also see this in the temporal lobes if we were to image lower down. Regions of cortical hypometabolism on FDG PET tend to co-localize with regions of cortical atrophy seen on structural brain MRI. So in Alzheimer's disease, again, we see that temporal parietal uh, pattern as well as posterior cingulate gyri. Frontotemporal dementia, it will see frontal and temporal. And in dementia with Lewy bodies, it can be more diffuse, but in particular, we're looking for hypometabolism in the uh, bilateral occipital lobes. 